Welcome again friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And in this video, we will be talking about southern blotting. Okay. So in the series of videos, we'll be talking about all the different techniques related to blotting. We have southern blotting, northern blotting, western blotting. Uh, these are the three major types of blotting and we'll also look at the differences between these three. So what is southern blotting? Now the idea of blotting, it is a technique with which we can identify a specific target DNA with the help of DNA hybridization technique. Okay. Now the second question, what is DNA hybridization? Hybridization means when you know DNA have two different strands, one and another strand that are linked with each other and paired with each other with the help of hydrogen bonds, they are complementary to each other. So if you give complementary strand, they are going to interact with its other pair and form double strands that is known as a hybridization we use this nature of dna which is complementary feature of dna that means always adenine binds with thymine and guanine with cytosine this nature we use that uh, as a hybridization protocol and we used to find out the target dna from a mixture of other contents of the dna for example inside a cell this is a whole genomic dna present let me draw let me draw a cell let's say this is a cell and this is a nucleus of that cell inside that nucleus it contains a large amount of its dna which is a genomic dna complete amount of the dna now we crack this cell open we break this cell with a detergent treatment then we extract all the dna that is present in the nucleus and then what we have we have all those genomic dna contents outside now what we want exactly we don't know that there is a specific gene present in, in a location let's say this red colored gene this is our target gene we want to know whether this gene is present in this mixture of dna or not right so we know about the sequence of this dna but we don't know whether the dna is present in this mixture or not to find that out we can use a complementary target of this DNA, complementary of this, this DNA. For example, if this DNA uh, of our interest carries, let me write it from this direction to be easy to write. If, if the sequence for this target DNA is, for example, this A T T A G G A, then uh, we know the target, we know the sequence of this uh, gene. What we will do is we will prepare a complementary of that strand, and that will be T A. T C C T. So this will be uh, acting as a probe. So we'll take that as a probe, and this probe can pair with the target DNA. So we can find this portion of the DNA out from the mixture of rest of the DNA portions. That is the idea. Now to keep this thing in our mind, this is known as a DNA hybridization technique. But then what exactly blotting means? Only hybridization? The answer is no. It's two different processes altogether. First thing, how exactly we will find this mixture of DNA or mixture of fragments of the DNA? The answer is we need to take this complete genomic DNA extracted from the cell. And the second step will be uh, to break this DNA down from different fragments with the help of restriction endonuclease enzyme. Restriction endonuclease enzymes can cleave at a specific location of this DNA and they will break it down into smaller fragments. Smaller fragments are generated upon the treatment of restriction endonuclease. Once these fragments are generated, some of these fragments may carry our target DNA sequences and rest of them are not. So now once these fragments are generated, then we load this fragment of the DNA. So let me write the stages. Here we have a restriction digestion. After this is done, we then load this DNA in agarose gel or the process known as gel electrophoresis okay gel electrophoresis is a process which uh, helps to separate the mixture of dna based on their length okay the 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 larger the dna is it will travel less the smaller the dna is it will travel more in the gel matrix so what it looks like 
I'm not going to talk about details of agarose gel electrophoresis here, but I, I hope that you know about the gel electrophoresis. If you don't know, then I will recommend you to watch my gel electrophoresis video in my channel. So this is the gel and let's say these are the, there are groups present in the gel where we load uh, our DNA. In one of the groups, I, we put some marker which has a specific known length that we know it acting as a scale or rul ruler. On the other hand, we, we load the target DNA. Now, once we load the target DNA, larger one will be present at, so this is the minus, this is the plus, because in agarose gel what we have, we have a, we have a electrodatards, negative and positive, DNA has a negative backbone, so they tends to migrate towards the positive end. So the directionality of DNA movement will be this. So you load the DNA, larger one will be at very close to the well, and the shorter length DNA will be traveling at the maximum directions over there, for example. Okay? So these are the different data that we can get. So what we do, we extract the DNA, break it down with restriction enzyme, take the fragments, load them in agarose gel, run the gel. After running the gel, we get this complete data of where exactly the DNAs are placed. So as you see, after doing the gel electrophoresis, if we now we stain the gel with color, we have different dyes to stain the gel, which will only stain uh, the DNA, not only the rest of the uh, gel, it will stain the DNA, so that we can visualize what is called as bands. So you see the bands, that is giving us the presence of different fragments of the DNA. For example, after this, uh, this restriction digestion, we have few larger strands, few smaller strands, and one of them, we have our target DNA, which is a moderately length strand. Now, when we look at the wells, when we look at the gel and the bands, all these DNA corresponding bands are present here. For example, we load that thing in the second well, so all these bands are present in the second well. But I have a question. Can you tell me by looking at the band, which one is our target DNA? That means this red one. Is there any way to guess and tell which one is the length of our target DNA? The answer is no, it's not always possible. Actually, it's difficult because you know, not always the resolution of the gels are proper so that uh, these bands can be scattered or, or the bands can be of any side. How could we know that our target DNA, which, am, which among this is our target DNA? There's only way to know that with the hybridization technique that we discussed earlier. When we combine the electrophoresis with hybridization, it gives us enough strength to find out, to not only separate the DNAs from each other, but also to find out exactly targeted DNA. This whole process of this running electrophoresis and then also tagging this specific target DNA with a probe and then finding out the specific target DNA, this whole process is known as southern blotting. That in a sense is southern blotting. It took so much time to finally take the name of southern blotting, but this is how it, it's done. So for any southern blotting, start with extraction of the DNA, then restriction digestion, then you load them in gel, go through the gel electrophoresis. Once the DNA are separated, then what we do, we will do the probing or nucleic acid hybridization. But there is a problem. Because this gel we are talking about, it's much more fragile. Even if you try to pick this gel up with a spatula of your hands, it's sometimes broke because it's not that strong. So for the hybridization assay or, or attaching of probe, we require something strong. We require something that can hold on to all these techniques because we'll be adding so many things into there. We'll be adding the probe, we'll be washing it thoroughly. We need something more strong. So gel is not that strong. So gel will be broken down if we do that much of uh, work on, on gel. So what is the solution for that? One thing came as a solution in 1975 by E. M. Southern and, and his colleagues. That is, you can make a replica of this agarose gel onto a filter paper. That is known as nitrocellulose membrane paper. So, you can just take an imprint of this whole thing. How exactly? The idea 
which is based on the southern blotting is mainly at this point. The transferring of the DNA content from the agarose gel onto the nitrocellulose membrane filter. That is the uniqueness of southern blotting. That is the idea EM Southern developed. Because this agarose gel electrophoresis is early developed. It's not the new idea. But the new idea is the transfer mechanism. Hybridization is, was also kind of easy to achieve. But this transfer makes it a unique choice. So let's look at the transfer procedure now. Let me erase this part. So here we have the DNA of, uh, the, uh, of the gel. So the way to transfer this is migration of this DNA that is attached in the in, in this that is present in the gel towards the filter. So what we do exactly we take we take a, a solution buffer solutions are required in every different stage. So let me draw it. Here we go. Let's say this is the tray where we put the buffer filled with buffer and uh, we also have a sponge on it. So let me draw the sponge so down. This is the sponge. I don't know whether you can visualize the uh, drawing because it's kind of getting faded. Anyways, so this is the buffer and this is the sponge. And right on the top of the sponge, we place our gel. This is the gel. Okay, this is gel. This is sponge. This is alkaline buffer. Okay, and then on top of this gel, we put some. Pep, uh, we, we we put the the filter nylon nitrocellulose filter paper. This is the nitrocellulose filter. Okay, and then on top of this nitrocellulose filter, we put some some paper towels. And at the end, we put some weight. Let's say 500 gram of weight. A weight. So this is what we are looking for right now. See that very carefully. This organization is kind of important, and actually, uh, many students have issues with like uh, to understand about this whole process and where what is organized after what. But once you know the concept. You should not forget it. In the in the bottom, we have the the alkaline buffer, which will help to generate the capillary mechanism or capillary activity of water movement or solute movement. You know there are different ways the movement is possible. Normally, in the blotting process of DNA and RNA, we use this capillary action or capillary force for the movement of water. You know water can move against the gravitation the force known as capillary force. That is exactly what is going on here because there is a sponge present uh, and we are put, putting some weight from the top. You know there is this interaction between the gel and nitrocellulose membrane is the most important thing because they should be placed one after another just properly aligned the nitrocellulose membrane that we put should be placed completely on this gel and then properly placed there. Okay, On the bottom we have sponge, gel, and the nitrocellulose and on the top we have some paper towels and some weight. So as we apply weight that creates a pressure and capillary force helps water or not all this alkaline, alkaline solution or buffer to go on the top. As these solutions are moving to the top you see it is going through this gel onto the nitrocellulose membrane. So it is creating a pressure, it is creating a force. Why? Because we are putting some force on the top that helps to generate the capillary action from the bottom towards the top. So as the water is flowing, uh, actually not water, it is a buffer consisting different uh, uh, other things, not exactly water, but this buffer is flowing. Once the buffer is flowing, it is migrating through the agarose gel to the nitrocellulose membrane. Now this buffer can migrate through the nitrocellulose membrane even. It can go past the nitrocellulose membrane to the paper towels, no issues. But 
DNA molecules that are present here in this agarose gel as they this buffer is pushing so all this DNA will be pushed out to go and attach to the nitrocellulose membrane but they cannot pass through the membrane so what happens both are moving the buffer is moving as well as uh, the DNA from the gel is also moving now once they are moving let us say these are the DNA fragments once they hit this nitrocellulose membrane they cannot go past it so it will be attached to the nitrocellulose membrane while on the other hand the buffer can easily pass through it and it will pass through and go to the all these paper towels and paper towels will absorb that so that is the idea it is like a sieve that you only take out the DNA will be attached and the water will come, come out that is the idea here so once this DNA are forced it will be going and attached to the nitrocellulose membrane and another important thing about nitrocellulose membrane is that they are kind of a sticky feature to the DNA this membrane is kind of very very adhesive towards the uh, phosphodiester bonds of the DNA so they can be easily adhered to the nitrocellulose membrane once this process is done and then we take out the weight and the paper towels just simply take this nitrocellulose membrane on our hand now the reason for using nitrocellulose membrane as I told you because it's much strong it's a paper so you can handle that properly better way compared to the gel so you take that out the nitrocellulose membrane and once you have the nitrocellulose membrane it will be exact replica like this agarose gel that we have earlier okay so let me draw that this is the nitrocellulose membrane and it has all those things present just like this because it has a replica now what we will do is that this is the time for adding the probe and do the nucleotide hybridization reaction so in this nucleotide hybridization reaction here or nucleic acid hybridization on the better way we need to know the sequence of the target that we know for example this is the target remember we earlier talked about it this is the target DNA and this is the probe so we, we know the probe so what we will do is that you know DNA are attached to this nitrocellulose membrane which are double stranded so what we need to do we need to separate those double strands of the DNA to make single stranded DNA attached because if the DNA is already double stranded we cannot add any probe so probe cannot bind we need a single stranded DNA attached to the membrane so to do that let's say let's say all the all the DNA that that we know that are attached there are double stranded so what we do we add some some denaturation buffer that will help to denature uh, one of the strands of the DNA so now we have only a single strand of the DNA present let me draw it another color let's say single strand of the DNA are present now we apply the probe so once we apply the probe the known probe probe is complementary to the target DNA so let's say there are so many DNA present so many DNA was present in this gel okay but this probe is only going to bind with the target DNA so among all this DNA fragments that were present the probe only attached to some of that or only one of that which is the target now how exactly we find out because what is the signal that we are getting there are two different things that we can use here three different things actually we can use this probe attached with radio radioactive isotope of any of the molecules that we use so it could be a radioactive probe okay mm, say p32 we can use because it's common thing that is present in the in the dna or nucleotides so you can use a p32 it's a radio labeled probe so if you use a radio labeled probe after binding what we will do we simply put this film in the in a dark room and put a uh, x-ray film because radio label uh, when you start to uh, emit this radio level uh, and it's it's this whole process will go on in that case it's going to create bands on that uh, radio film or auto radiograph we call it as an auto radiograph the whole process we put an extra film on the top and as the radioactivity goes by uh, it starts generating a film only in that point where the target DNA is located that's one thing 
Another thing we can also do is that this probe can be hybridized with any chemiluminescence molecule, uh, which is a chemical that when you put a substrate, the chemical will react with the substrate, it provides a light that we can visualize. That thing will also tell the position of the target DNA. Or it could be attached with any colorimetric chemicals or enzymes. The probe can be attached with any colorimetric enzymes. What is the colorimetric enzymes? That, that enzyme when you put a substrate, it will convert the substrate into any colored product that we can also visualize. But mostly in case of this DNA hybridization assays, we use radio labeled probe or we use chemi chemiluminescence. These are the most used thing, mostly the radio label probes that we use. It's easy to use, easy to prepare, it's not that costly, it's cost effective. So use that, it can give us a radio uh, level and, and, and radiation and it is going to give the band in the auto radiograph. So when we develop the auto radiogram, auto radiograph, it's going to provide us the information about the target DNA that we are searching for. So that in a sense you see is the whole process of southern blotting. It starts with isolation of the DNA, extraction of the DNA, then restriction digestion of the DNA. Then we move to uh, agarose gel electrophoresis. Then we go for the imprintation of this agarose gel onto the nitrocellulose membrane. Then we add a probe and go for DNA hybridization. Then we get our result. So it is a multi-step process many stages are linked one after another and should be done in the sequential fashion and if there is any issue in one of any of this point it could get wrong so wh whenever we are looking for multi step biological technique processes the degree of error or the chance of the error is more because there are more steps so more chance of error so we need some expert hands to do all these techniques in the lab if you are doing all these techniques you know that you take many times a practice to go it correctly. Even after many years of PhD, uh, people even uh, make mistakes with mostly with western blotting, which is much time consuming compared to the southern blotting. So anyways, this in a sense is the idea of southern blotting. I hope you understand the video. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that and share this video with your friends. And stay tuned because rest of the other three videos are also coming which are northern blotting, western blotting and the differences between southern blotting, northern blotting and western blotting. Thank you.